welcome back to Solved or Unsolved. So this is just a quick off the cuff look at some cases that people have uh, questions about, whether they're solved or unsolved. It could be somebody that's in jail for murder that there's questions about. It could be an equivocal death, meaning that somebody has died and it was classified as suicide when maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was an actual homicide or maybe it was an accident. That's what solved or unsolved is about. Some of these warrant a deeper dive into, and that's what I'm going to do if I think that it warrants it. Now, this one I'm going to tell you right off the bat warrants it, but I know this case uh, off the top of my head a little bit, so I wanted to, to discuss it with you a little bit, and that is the assassination of John F. Kennedy. So I don't have to get into the background too much. You know, John F. Kennedy, he uh, was 35th president of the United States. He defeated uh, Richard Nixon in, I believe, 1960 for the presidential election, and he was uh, assassinated a few years later, I believe 1963, uh, November 22nd, I want to say, around 12.30 in the afternoon in uh, Dealey Plaza in Texas. Now, what's the controversy? Well, if you're here, you already know the controversy, right? Uh, there's no question he was murdered. He was assassinated. People like to throw around that term assassination a little bit too much uh, when they talk about other people. John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Who's responsible? Is it the person who was arrested for it and at the Warren Commission that was handed the task of figuring this out? Lee Harvey Oswald, a, uh, a Marine Corps veteran, known communist, and where all the evidence tends to point. You know, I've gone back and forth. When I was younger, I read on this case a lot before I became a uh, detective. And I was always up in the air. And throughout the years, there's only one image that sticks with me to make me question who was responsible. So the reason I ask this is because Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested and subsequently killed. He was not assassinated. He was shot by Jack Ruby when they were transporting him. And so he never stood a trial where obviously more things would have came out and people would have known, I think, what happened. But the image known in the Zapruder film of Kennedy being shot is something extraordinary compelling. So this one image on the Zapruder film of Kennedy's head going back like he was shot from the front, you know, to me that always stuck with me and to me it, at the time proved that he was shot in the front from the grassy knoll area and not from the back of this, what, the sixth floor of the book depository by Lee Harvey Oswald, even though his rifle was found up there um, and people had seen him up there. Now, Vincent Bugliosi, who prosecuted Manson, wrote a book on this. I did not read all of it, but I did read some of it when he concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone gunman. Now, I'm not sure if you know this. Some of you people might know that are my uh, fans and watch all my videos. One of my most treasured pieces of memorabilia. I have a couple. I have uh, part of the floor from where Billy the Kid escaped uh, from the courthouse, the original flooring. Uh, I have uh, some stuff from Leonard Skinner that was on the airplane crash with them. But one of the, my most cherished ones was a handwritten letter that... Vincent Bugliosi sent to me uh, probably in 2013 maybe and he was on his deathbed and he took the time to handwrite a letter to me um, praising my organization and praising me as an investigator and, and so on and so forth and um, for a 15 year old kid that was reading Helder Skelter at the time I cherished that and I still do and uh, he passed away sh couple weeks maybe a couple months at the most after writing that to me and uh, just 
just grateful and humbled. However, it doesn't change my opinion as to what I may think. I will just say that, for me, the Zapruder film of his head, Kennedy's head going back, but I watched experiments done on this, and one of the things that people say is that, number one, Oswald couldn't make that shot. Well, I disagree, and I disagree very uh, vehemently, because he is not only a Marine, same as me, and I can shoot. He can shoot. Every Marine that I know can shoot. Yes, it was a moving target, but it had slowed completely to make a hairpin turn. And I tell you, I've never been to Dealey Plaza. However, I got these virtual reality goggles that I use to return to crime scenes. Because it's the closest thing you can get to actually being there. And let me tell you something, it puts you right there. So I went to Dealey Plaza with these goggles. So I'm standing, there's an X on the road where you can stand and look around. And I looked up at that depository, the sixth floor. The first thing I said was, I can make that shot. So if I think I can, and I'm not a you know a, a, an expert shot by no means. Uh, I did qualify as an expert, you know, in the Marine Corps. But like I know, lots of people are gonna shoot better than me. My brother can shoot better than me. He wasn't in the Marine Corps. Uh, my dad can shoot better than me, and he was in the Marine Corps. My buddy Jeremy Brown, who runs the CERT team for the Williamsport Bureau of Police, and he was a Marine too, and he can shoot better than me. I'm just saying. But as soon as I thought, saw that, and I'm not a very cocky person when it comes to my expertise with a rifle but when I saw it I said I could make that shot so if I could say that I'm sure Lee Harvey Oswald thought he could make the shot and he maybe did but when he was arrested he says he was a patsy and uh, you know this and that there's speculation that heavy speculation and Michael Francis who has a YouTube channel and was a was a mafioso back in the day. A very high ranking one said that the mafia is the one who killed Kennedy because they put him in office by getting him the votes necessary. And then, I mean, what he do? Basically, he sicked his brother. You know, appointed his brother Robert as attorney general, who went after the mafia with furious vengeance. And went after Jimmy Hoffa with for his ties, and that's a whole nother story with Jimmy Hoffa. But the JFK assassination is one of those enduring mysteries that will that will never be solved. It'll never go away, no matter what evidence you would ever present. It would never go away. Somebody would say, "Hey, no," they you would just argue. Now, Cyril Weck, who I have much respect for, is adamant that it was a conspiracy. And he goes around and gives some, some lectures, and I'm not sure if he still does, but he talks about that. Um, I Another interesting tidbit. I had many drinks one night with Dr. Warner Spitz, and Dr. Warner Spitz told me a story that I'll never forget about... John F. Kennedy's brain and where did it go because it's it went missing and he told me flat out that it got thrown away <laughs> with all the other brains that were being studied and I found that hard to believe um, that the president of the United States brain would just mysteriously get mixed up in a jar with all the other you know cadaver brains and get thrown away and uh, I remember him saying when I said that, he said, when they're on the table, they're all the same. And that's compelling, you know. Maybe not so truthful. I can't say that. I mean, that's how he felt. And that is good for all victims, you know. you Everyone's equal when you're on the autopsy table. So I'll never forget those discussions with Dr. Spitz. Uh, so what do I think? 
Do I think JFK was killed by Lee Harvey Oswald? Or was it a conspiracy? I tend to believe that it was Lee Harvey Oswald acting alone. But I am not convinced. Not even close. Again, that image of him going back like this. Now, we all seen the movie JFK, I guess. Oliver Stone, I thought it was a good movie. It was obviously slanted to a conspiracy, but it was a true story about Jim Garrison, the what was he, the district attorney of uh, New Orleans that brought forth this uh, this charge that it was a conspiracy and actually held, rested somebody on it. Now, was that a prime example of somebody going down a rabbit hole? I believe so. I believe so. Um, but this would be a case that would take significant amount of time in order to really go through everything and the evidence. But wasn't that what the Warren Commission was to do? And they did that? Who did I know? I knew somebody that was on the Warren Commission because it always fascinated me. I want to think it was Cyril Wack. I'll have to look into that, but I, I seem to believe that, and I was like, wow, you know, because I, one night Cyril Weck gave me a, uh, a ride home, and here he is, probably 80-something years old, and I'm like, man, that's Cyril Weck, he was on the Warren Commission driving me home. <laughs> that just blew my mind, but uh, it's always six degrees of separation from everything. It's, it's unbelievable, but... I mean, if there is any case, this would be the number one case that you could go down rabbit holes on, and people have. You know, Jack Ruby was associated with the mafia. He's the guy that took out Lee Harvey Oswald. And I mean, some people go as far as say that Lyndon Johnson was responsible for this. And that's because you always, the way I used to look at homicides and murders before I became a detective was, who benefited the most? Well, if you go off of that, the vice president, because then he becomes president. But think about that. Come on. That's asinine. Um, but th those theorists and those theories are out there. The mafia theory, I, I could buy into that. I really could. But, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald fleeing the scene shooting a Dallas police officer coming out of the movie theater when they go to question him. A lot of things are add up to Lee Harvey Oswald, I believe, more than anything else. But I haven't looked at it, you know, with a laser focus like I do cases that I am consulting on. So I might see something else and then there, then I, I keep going back to his head going back like that, you know. Man. You certainly see the first shot. You know, he grabs his throat. Um, and then, the, what, the second one misses. And then the third one, his head explodes. Um, but to me, it explodes by going back like he was shot in the front. So, I would have to look at it more, for sure. So, hey, solved or unsolved, John F. Kennedy assassination. You guessed it unsolved I will do a deeper dive into this when I have time because this is going to take time to really look at the evidence and uh, and go through it but anybody says that well I mean people could say that it's solved in in their minds and that's okay this solved or unsolved is my opinions and I would say that this is unsolved and it needs looked into further until I can come up with a better determination of whether he was assassinated by a conspiracy, um, whether it was the mafia, whether it was somebody else, or was it just, uh, you know, a, a former Marine with a huge grudge. That'll be for next time. So there's your little true crime short, and JFK assassination is unsolved. So, until next time, Maine's out. Wow.